Good evening. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Showed up the king, the one and only, and I'm here to bring you my review for The Walking Dead season three, episode six. Uh, this episode was great. Well, it was good. Maybe not, maybe not great, but damn good. Lots of twists and turns. Lots of a. Uh, Un, uh, you know, unseen things that happen. Uh, Andrea is a hoe, and uh, Michonne is a badass. Let's jump into this review slash recap because it's cold as shit down here, and I am ready to go to bed. <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. Um, this episode starts off on a hunting trip, and it's obvious the governor is trying to clean up his loose ends, uh, namely Michonne, uh, she, I guess, you know, like they said, no one leaves the compound, uh, no one leaves, not without permission at least, and uh, the fact that she left, you know, they sent the hunting party to basically kill her. I mean, she can't go, you know, potentially tell people about where they are, um, you know, just uh, the regular, not that she would have, but... I just thought it was kind of, you know, kind of dirty for him to send people after her. So, of course, he sent Merle and a couple of unknowns. Because, you know, whenever you see a bunch of unknowns with a main character, you know the unknowns are shish kebab. I mean, let's let's just be honest. <clears throat> so, they're hunting down Michonne and they come across some walker bodies. And it was so funny that the walker bodies were all chopped up and in a shape that says, go home. So, uh, little Neil noticed that, and he was like, yeah, maybe we should get the hell out of here. And, uh, of course, Merle's like, no, we got to catch her, blah, 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 blah. And they continue to hunt Michonne. Um, meanwhile, at the compound, Andrea is, you know, walking around, living life to the fullest, living in her, you know, drug-induced, I won't say drug-induced, but living her little uh, dream world, thinking that there's nothing wrong where she is. She's as happy as happy can be. And she wants to do more. She wants to give back to the community. So uh, she asked the governor if she can be put on uh, bridge duty, I think it was called. Essentially wall duty, wall duty, so that she can look out for Walker. She meets this random girl with a crossbow, you know, the girl with a crossbow says, Oh, you know, my daddy taught me how to shoot, blah, blah, blah. Walker shows up. The girl can't shoot for shit. I'm like, what the fuck are you teaching her? So, like, she's shooting Dan Walker. First arrow completely misses. Or it hits him and bounces off one of the two. The second arrow, it actually looked like the Walker ducked the arrow. So, I thought that was kind of funny. So, of course, Andrea was like, you know what, fuck this. I'll take it out the easy way. So she stabs him in the brain, and of course, the little girl on the roof is like, you're not supposed to do that. You can't jump down. Blah, 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 blah. Andrea gets in trouble. Then she come, she admits to the governor that she actually did love the fights. She did love the violence. She just didn't want to admit to it. Which, of course, the governor then uses that to turn it into some sideways, you like me too thing. And then they instantly fall in love with each other. Yeah, I know, it's it's ridiculous. But I want to just get that part out of the way, because that was probably the most annoying part of the episode. Their whole love thing that they got going on. Um, Back at the prison, I would probably say the second biggest storyline this episode was with Rick. Rick received a phone call, as you guys know, last episode. And, you know, we found out who's on the other end. It's uh, some girl talking about she has a safe place to go. You know, Rick is begging her and pleading with her. Please, you know, we have a group. I have a son. I have a baby. You know, I'm just trying to convince the person on the other line. Hey, we're not bad people. We can come there and we'll be safe. The, the person on the phone says, fine. You know, I'll talk to the person in charge and we'll get back to you. You know, Rick is crying. He's just basically, you know, losing his shit. Uh, there's a couple more episodes. There's scenes with the whole, you know, phone call thing. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, it was all in Rick's head. You know, the nigga's crazy. He's crazier than cat shit, as I like to say. Uh, he was, this was all in his head. The last voice towards the end of the episode was, 
Lori's voice. And again, um, a lot of people don't realize that this actually was a scene taken straight from the comics because this exact same thing happens in the comics uh, where he gets a phone call and, you know, the voice on the other line is Lori. So I actually kind of like how they kind of did that. Uh, they kept it in from the comic. Again, I don't read all the comics, so I don't have all the information on how they differ. I just read bits and pieces of the comic because I wanted to see how the prison situation differ from it did now, which is greatly, which is good. <clears throat> I won't get into any more detail than that. Um, one other huge thing of note, uh, the group, uh, Carl, the new black guy, we're going to call him T-Dog 2. I'm going to call him T-Dog 2. Uh, Carl, T-Dog 2. Uh, they're all walking around trying to, you know, clean up the rest of the fairgrounds, you know, clean up the rest of the prison, make sure there are no more walkers going around. And they walk past this, I guess, prison door, and there's a little faint, you know, pushing on the door. So they figure it's a walker trying to get out, you know. He decides that, oh, the, the walker's too weak, we'll get it on our way back, and they just keep going. They keep going to clear out the rest of the walkers. Um, back to the best part of the episode, which I have the most to talk about, is the Michonne versus Merle hunting. Uh, they're still hunting her. She comes out of the, out of the blue from the sky, cuts down two of the uh, the unknowns. Like I said, you know, they get one gets his head chopped off, the other one gets uh, disemboweled, I believe. Maybe not disemboweled, but he gets fucked up. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, no, 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 he gets impaled. I'm sorry, he gets impaled with the sword. And then Michonne tends to, to, you know, proceeds to use him as a human shield while Neil watches. So, you know, Merle is shooting, and, you know, Merle is shooting at her, and, you know, the bullets are hitting her, and she throws him off and runs into the woods. You know, Merle continues to shoot, wounding Michonne in the knee. Uh, then he chases after her. She disappears again, and he's walking around with Merle again trying to find her. They eventually do catch back up with her again, and another fight ensues. She gets a good slash in on Neil, the other unknown guy, and uh, then she gets a chance to, you know, she clashes with Merle, you know, they're talking or whatever, and then a bunch of walkers come out of nowhere and attack the group, all of them together. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting to kind of break up the tension that was going on, and in that process, Michonne disembowels one of the zombies, and its guts pour all over her, and, you know, she actually gets it in her mouth and on her chest, and it was disgusting. Now, um, I guess in The Walking Dead, you can't get turned by their fluids. So I guess saliva doesn't have anything to do with it or their bodily fluids because it clearly got in her mouth. So I don't know how she didn't turn, but I guess it has to be from an actual bite or scratch. It can't be from just like their guts getting on you or... Well, not even necessarily getting on you, but getting in your mouth or, you know, how kind of how it is in uh, 28 days later. Which is fine. No no big deal there. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, after that encounter, Michonne gets away again. And Merle has the idea, you know what? This chick is dangerous. I'm not about to die. Let's go back. Then Neil, the guy who I told you guys before, who had an epiphany decides that now he wants to have a backbone and wants to uh, go keep looking for her. You know, Mer Merle is like, no, 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 we're going back. You know, you know, fuck her. She's dead. Anyway, you know, she's in the red zone. You know, just let her be. We'll tell, you know, the governor whatever story we want to tell him. So, of course, Neil is like, no, I'm not going to lie to the governor. If we don't go find her, then, you know, then, you know, Merle is just like, okay. No, you're right. You know, you're really sharp. And, you know, there's a bird. Like, hey, what's the bird? Bam, shoots him in the face. I'm sitting there thinking to myself, come on, Neil. Who didn't see that coming? Come on. Neil, you were stupid. <laughs> I was like, I said, you're stupid. I mean, if Merle telling you to go back, he got a gun, he gonna kill you. You should have just went back. Sorry, Merle. Uh, so, and, but the, this is the funny part. This is the funny part. So, Michonne walks off. She realizes that you know, she runs into a group of walkers and they walk right past her. So then she realizes, oh, as long as I'm covered in their essence or whatever you want to call it, the walkers can't tell who I am. They'll leave me alone. So she's basically free to walk around however she wants to, barring any rain that happened. You know, that's what happened with Rick 
and then before you know it started raining and then all the guts and shit fell off of her. Well, she's good right now. <clears throat> so she's walking around. She comes up to uh, Glenn and his girlfriend who are raiding another store looking for baby formula for the baby. You know, she's watching behind a the car. Then Merle shows up. Merle shows up and he's like, hey, hey, you know, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. They draw their guns. He puts his gun down. Now, this is a part of the episode that really pisses me off. And again, um, this this really pissed me off. So, keep in mind, Merle has one arm, and it's his left. So he drops the gun he has, and he's walking towards Glenn and his girlfriend with both of them with their weapons drawn. Both. And you know, Glenn's like, you know, hey. Just stay back, you know, whatever. He's doing the right thing. You know, Merle is like, hey, I just want to know where my brother is. Is he alive? You know, he, Glenn is like, yes, he's alive. He's like, oh, great. Can you take him to me? Glenn is like, no, we're not taking him to our group. I mean, I wouldn't have took him to my group either. I mean, the dude's walking around with a freaking Ginsu thing on his arm. He's clearly bloody, dirty as hell. I'm not bringing you back. So they had a great idea. We'll tell your brother where you are. You stay here and he'll come back to see you. Smart idea. All the while, Merle is slowly moving forward towards them. And he's Glenn is telling him, stay back, stop, stop coming closer. <sighs> now, someone explain to me. I, I, I'm going to leave it to you guys. Someone explain to me how a one-armed Merle is able to reach back, draw his gun, aim it at the two of them, shoot, Call the distraction and is able to grab Glenn's girlfriend and put the gun to her head. Yo, you need a minute? Oh, wait. Yeah. It makes no sense, right? Makes no sense. I'm like, you got two people with loaded weapons pointed at you at point blank range. How does Merle with one arm? Draw his gun, shoot your shoot at you guys, then get the drop on your girlfriend before you can even blat an eye. It's just, it's just, it's just the crazy shit ever. It's the dumbest shit ever. I mean, like I said, to me, it didn't it didn't ruin the episode for me. I just I just really that just really pissed me off, and I'm in, I'm entitled to that. I, that really pissed me off because I don't understand in what world could he not just get shot by at least one of them. I'm like, you ain't going to shoot. And then especially if I see you miss, I'm going to shoot you. I'm like, this is plain as day. It's like as soon as he shot, they both darted out of the way. Like, I'm like, you guys are used to shooting walkers at the drop of a hat. And you can't kill a one-armed Merle? I'm like, come on. Come on, son. <sighs> so, of course, Merle kidnaps Glenn's girlfriend, makes Glenn get in the car and drive them back to the compound. And, you know, of course, you know, that's going to that's gonna be special. But in the meantime, Michonne is back, and she had been watching the whole thing transpire. Now, what I wanted to see, now this is what I wanted to see. What I wanted to see is for Michonne to step out from behind the car and be like, hey, he's lying to you, he's trying to kill me, don't trust him, you know, something. But at this point in time, I mean, hell, the way, the way it was looking, Amuro could have easily... Just took all three of them on at the same time and then still would have ended up with the same result. So apparently Merle is a god. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> overall, like I said, the episode was fantastic. The only other tidbits that need to be talked about, like I said, Andrea's a hoe. She went from being on wall duty to talking to the governor about, you know, liking him, him liking her, to them kissing and drinking scotch, then to having sex. All within the same day. I mean... I guess it's a zombie apocalypse. I guess it ain't no need to, to be coy, but damn, girl. She know how to sleep her way to the top. Uh, of course, Merle makes it back to the camp, tells the governor all about the prisoners, and tells him about how Michonne is dead. And, you know, he's like, look, I'm going to get the location out of them. We'll, we'll figure this out. Uh, and that's and uh, that's that's kind of how the whole situation with them in. Last little tidbit before I go. Uh... 
over at the prison, you know, Rick is now over his whole insanity. He's talked to Lori. He's got his faculties back. He goes out, goes to see his beautiful daughter. And, you know, he's feeling good. He comes outside and looking around, enjoying the nice sunny weather. And, you know, Rick sees something off in the distance. You know, he's like, Carl, hold your sister. I'll be right back. You know, he's walking down. He's just looking. And there's just a whole field full of walkers. And who's standing in the middle? Michonne with a shopping bag of baby formula. So it's very interesting. We all know what that means. Is that both sides will have intel. And now that opens up <clears throat> how Rick and the gang will eventually meet the governor. Because they have to go save Glenn and uh, Glenn's girlfriend. Um... Yeah, it should be. It should be. It should be very interesting. Still loving The Walking Dead, but again, it's time for me. To, time for me to hear from you guys. Uh, what did you think of the episode? Were you as upset with the whole Merle situation as I was? Are you okay with Andrea being a hoe? Oh, you know what? Before I go, I'm sorry. I forgot about another important detail. Uh, what's your face is not dead. The door I was telling you about that was creaking open back and forth. Uh, they, they, they thought it was a walker was actually uh, Carol. Carol was alive inside and she was just tired and apparently I guess she was pushing on the door so that uh, someone would see and possibly save her and they did. So that's that's fantastic. Carol is not dead. She was just locked inside of a door. So that's good. So more Carol. Yay! Alright, uh, this is showing up the King, the one and only don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to come back next week and check out another action-packed episode of Walking Dead. And then don't forget to jump on YouTube and watch my review. Have a great day.